Hello there. A hotel in Ireland due to house asylum seekers has mysteriously burned down. How awful. Feelings are running high across Europe over the issue of ever-increasing numbers of newcomers being welcomed in by governments, but without the permission of the people they govern. But I cannot think of a good reason why anyone would want to go to the lengths of burning down such a beautiful old building as the Ross Lake House Hotel in County Galway in the Republic of Ireland. Can you? I mean, if this fire is a deliberate act of arson and was done to prevent asylum seekers being housed there, it would be a terrible act of the far right and racists, wouldn't it? Or are the good people of Ireland growing concerned about the implications of these good and decent people entering their country in such high numbers? Yes, these good and decent women and children OK, probably predominantly men, with good moral standards, all wanting nothing more than to integrate with Irish society and culturally enrich the country. Why would anyone do such a terrible criminal act of vandalism? Why indeed? And it's a good job no one was in the building when it um caught fire last night at about 11.35pm, wasn't it? Just for background, the Ross Lake House Hotel was built in 1850 and is set on five acres of landscaped real estate. It is, or was, set on two floors with 13 rooms and was being prepared to house 70 asylum seekers after several years of it lying empty. When what looks to be an act of arson took place with the Gardai saying they are investigating a criminal damage incident at the hotel. I wonder if any of those protesting against the use of the hotel as an asylum centre that had gathered outside of the hotel yesterday to blockade it saw anything suspicious. And on the other side of Ireland, in Rosslare Harbour, there are people protesting about the use of three hotels housing asylum seekers and Ukraine refugees. With a fourth hotel ready in the pipeline there, where that fourth hotel had been earmarked as a nursing home. The residents of this town are saying, enough is enough. But is anyone listening? I would say no when it appears no one was consulted about any of this. Now that sounds familiar, doesn't it? This is the one issue where governments know they will lose a consultation, so they ramrod it through as secretly and quickly as they can and hope they can catch any opposition off guard. Now, Ireland has a history of exporting its people around the world and so is very loath to contemplate any anti-immigrant sentiment. But with the high numbers now coming in, there is a growing realisation that immigration is of increasing concern to Irish voters and something that will play a big part in upcoming elections. It might even generate a new right-wing political offering. And polling indicates there is a hardening of hearts towards newcomers in Ireland. According to Reuters, census data shows the foreign-born population of Ireland has doubled to 20% in 20 years without any significant anti-immigrant sentiment in opinion polls. But over the past two years, immigration has surged to the third largest issue among voters, with 24% concerned, up from 4%. That leaves it behind only housing and cost of living concerns, according to a December the 3rd Ireland Thinks poll. Sounds like a tipping point has been reached. And it goes on to say that 28% of respondents to that poll would consider supporting a party with strong anti-immigration views, double the number of just two years ago. Already the Irish PM, Leo Varadkar, had been making noises in October about Ireland having reached its capacity to house asylum seekers. 
And he's cut payments to Ukrainian refugees as well. So it's all going to stop then, is it? But why talk with no action? Sounds like there'll be lots of noise, but no reduction in numbers. Giving me the impression that no one in the Irish government controls how many come into the country. So who is controlling it? Or have countries across Europe, like the UK, signed up to some sort of secret deal with the UN, maybe, for the redistribution of people around the planet? An agreement we, the public, are not meant to know anything about. I ask because the coordinated manner in which all this seems to be taking place across numerous countries simultaneously points firmly at a central plan somewhere. A plan that has never appeared in any manifesto as far as I'm aware. While in the UK, the Prime Minister Rishi Sunak furiously tries to distract us by claiming that hostile states will drive people to our shores via illegal routes to foster unrest. And he is very probably right. In fact, I think it's been happening for years and curbing illegal immigration is very important. But the problems they're experiencing in Ireland, and just like here in the UK, are not caused solely by illegal immigration. It is the level of legal migration that poses the biggest problem. Governments in Europe have been quietly ratcheting up the numbers of legal immigrants, hoping no one will notice. Or if they do, back off at the first sign of being called a racist. Richard. The Met Office is working on its predictions for Christmas, as in will we get a white Christmas or not? Yes, there's nothing like a white Christmas, unless of course you're sleeping on the streets. And there are many reasons why people find themselves on the streets, but don't worry, the new arrivals won't find themselves sharing a concrete pillow with our ex-service men and women. No! The new arrivals will be put up in either hotels or in social housing and given all they need to get themselves back on their feet. Yes, whatever it takes to make sure they have a comfortable existence. And I am sure they are looking forward to a white Christmas, if they observe Christmas, as it pulls in lots of crowds of infidels into Christmas markets for them to... But I'm not going to say any more on that, and I can't wait to be able to say what I want to over on our new Locals channel. Link to it in the descriptions box below. Let me tell you now, nobody sleeping rough on the streets looks forward to a white Christmas. And I beg you this Christmas, if you can afford it, to not pass somebody by sleeping rough for whatever reason they find themselves in that position. There are... There, look, just stop and say hello and ask them if they want a cup of tea or a warm pasty from Greg's. But by the grace of God go I. Give them a smile and an encouraging word. It does go a long way. If there is a mountain warehouse or a similar type shop and you can afford something that will keep them warm, then do it. Buy something. I have been scolded many a time by an ex when giving to someone in the street to be told that they will only spend the money on drink and drugs. Well, my reply was and always will be this. If you knew what they have to do to get those drugs and drink, and if you could step into their shoes for one moment, you'd think very differently. Many sell their own bodies to get their daily fix of whatever their poison is. And if me giving a tenner or you giving a tenner would be the difference between a man or woman having to do something that degrades them, destroys their souls, makes them feel worthless. Look, it means the giving of that money is worth the cost. Yes, of course, you can reduce that down to doing something just to, to virtue signal yourself and make yourself feel pious and righteous, and self-righteous, I should say. But look into their eyes and see the self-loathing that so many on the streets have. Imagine how it feels for those people who have to cultivate pity etching their own downtrodden lives onto their own faces just so someone can give to their begging bowls. 
So many times I have entered into debates with people who say that it's a lifestyle cho choice. Sorry, but please explain. Who would choose to live like that and aspire to a life like that? Granted, there are lifestyle choices that lead to people living on the streets. And they are lifestyle choices. But there is no decision where someone says, I want to be filthy, dirty and cold and spat at and urinated on and abused in every conceivable way. I would love to spend a Christmas doing what Jesus would do on a day when we, when we were supposed to be remembering him. And that is to be serving those who are in need. Like working at a soup kitchen for the day, visiting, you know, doing something for those in my community who are elderly and alone. But I have a family coming over and I feel like I am just making up excuses and a hypocrite. I hope I am less of a hypocrite next year, next Christmas, as I am this year. And I'm not saying all this to you now, so... As Jesus said about the Pharisees, you know, doing your good works in front of men. I, I don't want a reward for this, and I really don't want a reward for what I'm saying here. The only thing I want here is, you, is for you to think about these people. Please, look, on this channel, both Jeff and I complain about the world and the people in it. Many of the people. Maybe it's time we actually did something for our homeless, our lonely and those who are struggling with whatever issues they have. Expect a lot more posts like this because we are all in the same position and need to be reminded that it's not just a me, me, me world. A simple act of living kindness can make the difference in someone's life, especially when they feel unwanted, unvalued and unloved. Anyway... What do you lovely people think about what has been said in today's video? Leave your dribbles and your drabbles in the comment section below for Jeff and I to read. And please sign up to our new Locals channel where we can talk unrestrained. Link in the descriptions box below. We are seeing most of our peers migrating some of their content to Locals as a backup plan. Which, yes, it's subscription-based for each individual channel. But let's just say other platforms are clamping down on content, free speech, and removing monetization for what is a full-time job to many of us. So God bless each and every one of you, and bye for now.